Merry Christmas and good morning. Yes, we're still in that 12 days of the Yuletide. It is still the Christmas season. This year, we just get the one Sunday in the Christmas season. And for this year, a little different, I am on vacation. Yes, I'm not speaking to you live. This was recorded even longer ago than usual. So what does this mean for us? Well, for this morning, the reading and the reflection, the sermon, are brought to you courtesy of the Synod. The reading's done by an assistant to the bishop, Pastor Julie, and then Pastor Julie Menard, and then Bishop Fiddler brings the message. This is a resource that was sent out synod-wide for us to use if appropriate, and this is an appropriate time and place to use it. So earlier in the year, I had suggested that the sermon, the reflection, the musings that I had on Thanksgiving would fall, uh, would get used here, but decided just to leave that as audio. So if you get the emails or you can check out the podcast feed somewhere, like on Spotify, for example, uh, you can listen to that there if you're so inclined. And then next week, I will still be on vacation, and the plan for that week is uh, Pastor Josh Ehrler of Trinity Mount Morris up the road uh, will provide a video of what sermon he's giving there in his setting. And the plan is still to eventually at least move towards just live streaming these weeks when I am away. But there's a couple, one, a couple more uh, test runs, and there's a couple more, you know, formalities that need to be put into place, copyright and so forth. At any rate, for today, again, Merry Christmas. Let's get started. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who shines in glory, clothes us in compassion, and bears gifts of mercy for all. Amen. Let us prepare for Christ's advent by confessing our sinfulness before God and one another, trusting in God's endless mercy and love. Merciful God, we confess that we are not perfect. We have said and done things we regret. We have tried to earn your redeeming grace while denying it to others. We have resisted your call to be your voice in the world. Forgive us, loving God. Give us your righteousness, the strength to put aside our failures, and the courage to try again. Amen. Dear people of God, hear the good news. Christ the Savior is born. You are loved and forgiven in the name of Jesus who has come among us. You are freed from proving that you deserve to be loved because God's love is given to you as the most precious gift of all. Rejoice in this love and share it with the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and yet more wonderfully restored it. In your mercy, let us share the divine life of the one who came to share our humanity, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading for this morning comes from Galatians chapter 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, 
God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Here ends the reading. This is a biblical storytelling of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. At that time, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the Roman Empire should be registered for tax purposes. This was the first census while Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone went to their ancestral hometowns to be registered. Joseph was from King David's lineage, so he went from Nazareth in Galilee to King David's hometown, Bethlehem in Judea. He brought with him Mary, his fiance, who was now obviously pregnant. While they were there, she went into labor. Mary gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in the feeding trough because there was no room in their relatives' living quarters. Nearby, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel appeared among them, and the radiance of God's glory surrounded them. The shepherds were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. Look, I have good news that will bring great joy to all people. Your Savior is born today in King David's hometown. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a newborn child wrapped snugly in strips of cloth and lying in a feeding trough. Then suddenly appearing with the angel, there was a great multitude of the armies of heaven. They were praising God, saying, Glory to God in heaven and on earth, peace to those who please God. Then all the angels returned to heaven. The shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see what has been foretold as the Lord has revealed to us. So they hurried off and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the feeding trough. The shepherds told them everything that the angel had said to them about this child. Everyone was amazed by what they heard. Mary cherished these words and she thought deeply about them. Then the shepherds returned to their flocks, praising and glorifying God for all that they had seen and heard. It was as the angel had said, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved people of God, I am Bishop Stacy Fidler, called to serve as Bishop of the Northern Illinois Synod. Pastor Menard's telling of the Christmas Eve story takes me to different times and places in my heart. My memory is filled with images and moments with my family, my childhood church, Christmas programs, Santa Lucia gatherings, my first real tree as an intern, 
and my first Christmas Eve as a pastor. I remember stories and faces and names and even a few presents. But in my family, the center was always the Christmas story. Mary and Joseph and shepherds and angels and a simple newborn baby wrapped in whatever the people around him could scrounge up and laying there among them as a miracle. I'm not sure that I have always understood the depths of that miracle we proclaim. As a child, how much do you understand the importance of having God with us? But as an adult, in a world multiplying in pain and fear and uncertainty, I cannot imagine anything more powerful and important than this baby. I sat in several rooms recently where the multiplying of uncertainty filled the space. One room, people were gathered to talk about nonstop bombings on one side and nonstop threats of terrorism on the other. And you could see the grief growing. One room talked about the growing needs of hungry people and houseless people in our communities. The leader indicated that just as quickly as people find a safe, warm space, it seems like even more take their place in seeking safety and warmth. That certainly feels like the case with the refugees and migrants filling our borders and our cities. Oh Lord, where will they go? As a people, we can become fixed on the reality of growing pain. Or we can do something different. We can proclaim and live the miracle that breaks in and shows us something more. The apocalyptic readings and the strong words of John the Baptist that began Advent remind us that when left to ourselves, growing pain and uncertainty, they're what we get. We create this world in the image of our brokenness, our own fears, our own limits. We build governments and systems and communities based on who is in and who is other and who should stay away from whom. John the Baptist and the apocalyptic writers call us out on that. The world that we create is not what God creates. But God creates something more. God dreams of something more. And this child, this child is that something more. Left to ourselves, we keep reacting and rebuilding our own brokenness, our own limits and pains. And this is the world we get. But God doesn't leave us to ourselves. God breaks in and offers us something more. God breaks in and wraps us in strips of God's dreams for this world. God breaks in and holds up for us a new picture of who our neighbor is, what our communities could be, how our lives can spread light and life and hope. God breaks in. And with this simple baby, completely weak and vulnerable, God shows us a new way. And it is God's way that breaks open our hearts and fills them with the hope and songs of angels telling us to not be afraid. God's dream, God's world, God's kingdom is built on the way that this baby Emmanuel, God with us, lives among us. And by his very birth shows us that we are never left to ourselves. And that's the miracle this baby brings. The miracle that God's more, God's multiplying, overcomes all of the math of despair around us. The miracle that God comes to us. Do not be afraid. God is with us, and his name is Jesus. A number of you are using 
some materials during the Advent season that talk about whether joy, joy is able to be found in a weary world. This is one of the blessings that comes with that material. Dear ones, you go into a weary world, so speak tenderly. Do the good that is yours to do. Choose connection. Hold on to hope. And remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved. So go rejoicing. The world needs it. Amen. Trusting in God's good news of great joy for all people, we offer our prayers for ourselves, our neighbors, and the world God loves. You inspire faith in our hearts and call us to rejoice with our whole selves at the salvation you bring. Make our churches places of belonging for all people in the fullness of their being. Raise up the gifts and witness of people who are neurodivergent, living with disability, or bearing an invisible illness. Lord, in your mercy, your praise is sung throughout creation in all times and seasons. 
As the new year turns, ground us in your changeless and sustaining love. Keep us attentive to the rhythms of the cosmos and inspire us to live in harmony with all the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Give hope and stamina to leaders who work tirelessly for the sake of the most vulnerable. We pray especially for organizations working on behalf of children to provide basic needs, to protect from abuse and neglect, to address trauma, and to rescue from trafficking. Lord, in your mercy. Sustain all people who, like Simeon and Anna, have been waiting for salvation and wholeness. We pray especially for all those on our prayer list and anyone who's living with cancer or chronic illness, all people who are in physical rehab or addiction recovery, and those experiencing complications from infectious disease like long COVID and others. Lord, in your mercy. Let this community of faith be a joyful and welcome place for all ages and generations. Teach us to honor the wisdom of children, the inquisitiveness of youth, the thoughtfulness of adults, the knowledge of elders, and more. Lord, in your mercy. We give thanks for all the beloved who lived with the expectation and departed this life in peace. Sustain us in joy until we join them around your throne. Lord, in your mercy. Abide with us, O God of mercy, and receive our prayers according to your abundant grace. In Jesus' name, who first taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. As we draw to a close with our offertory prayer, I will remind you that we are praying with consideration for all gifts given and received, however they were given and received, and you now have the uh, option, if you'd like, to uh, scan that code with your phone if you'd like to make an offering uh, digitally. With that, let us pray. God, with us, you come as a baby to a manger. You slept on straw and greeted shepherds. You come again in bread and wine. Remind us how good you are at blessing ordinary things. And then through these gifts, help us to bless the lives of others in the strength of your holy name. Amen. May Christ, who by his incarnation has filled us with grace and truth, give you peace this Christmas and always. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Share the gift of Jesus. Thanks.